The University of California Davis researcher whose goal was to feed the world and save the planet will never get that chance. Sharon Gray was killed this week in Ethiopia, where she was planning to start a new research project. Fox News reporter Paul Tilsley reports from Johannesburg on a country tearing itself apart. We need justice. We need freedom, chant anti-government protesters across Ethiopia. And this week, American agricultural expert Sharon Gray was killed when protesters threw stones at her car. At least 52 died a week ago when police opened fire at a protest, leading to a deadly stampede. The fight against the government has even spread overseas. At the Olympics in Rio, Ethiopian silver medal winner Faisa Lelesa raised his arms in a protest salute. Back home, until recently, Ethiopia had been regarded as an island of stability, surrounded by unstable Somalia, Sudan, and South Sudan. The U.S. sees Ethiopia as a key ally in the region and annually hands out just under a billion dollars in aid. And the capital, Addis Ababa, is the center of African power, with President Obama drawn to address the continent's leaders at the headquarters of the African Union. In the streets nearby, the majority of Romo and Amhara ethnic groups believe their freedom and rights are being squeezed by the minority Tigray, who represent only 6% of the population and yet are the sole party in power. It's a potentially explosive situation, says analyst Solomon Mulugeta. The protests can only grow because uh, the problem is uh, very pervasive and it's going to continue because it has not been addressed fundamentally. One human rights agency says more than 700 protesters have been killed in the last year alone. And while in California today, relatives and friends of Sharon Gray mourn the death of this young woman who had gone to Addis Ababa to help the country, Ethiopia's ambassador here reached for a comment, told us that he is, I quote, a bit busy to talk to us. Shannon.